Hi friends, this is Marie Spalding of Living Felt, and in this segment, we are going to be needle felting little fantasy owls. You can needle felt so many different characters in a variety of colors. You can even make them a little more realistic if you like, and we're gonna show you how easy it is using our core wool, our MC1 batting, and just a few simple tools. So let's get started. Before we get to the tutorial, the fairies have some announcements and things that they want to share with you. So the next up is going to be Hannah, the bender of wool. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, how are y'all doing? So um, we want to thank y'all first of all for making all these felt along so awesome and so much fun. Um, y'all have really been eating them up and we love that. It's so inspiring to us to see all of y'all out there wanting to learn so much. So I'm just here to remind y'all about the uh, beach supply pack. We're doing the beach scape. So it's going to be a combination of some merino top wool, some luster fibers, and silk fabrics. And it's going to be a gorgeous felt along in my... Go ahead. Yeah, in my sure. able. So mm -hmm. we get... Showed y'all one. <laughs> we showed y'all one uh, maybe a week or so ago that was of a heart. So I think you're going to have the option to do the heart or the rectangle. So this is what that project's outcome is going to look like. It's, it's super fun, super high texture, just a great, great um, wet felting project. I'm really excited personally to learn how to do some of this <laughs> stuff too. And you've been making up some of the packs. Yes. So making, tell them when they're shipping. They're going to be shipping um, October 1st is a Monday, so we're going to try to get them out October 1st, maybe a couple before and a few after that, but right there at the beginning of October. That's our goal. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, we've had some people asking about our silk stock, and I'm here to let you know that our Uzbek silks are back in stock and on the site, ready for you. They are about a width of 90 centimeters or 35 inches, so we are very excited to get those back to you. And then I want to show you a new product that we are bringing out. We have something called Viscose Top, and this is right here, the Viscose, right here, and this one here. And this is a new luster fiber. It is an inexpensive substitute for silk, and it is very, very soft, very, very shiny. Oops, some of those over there. And I wanted to let you know that um, people love putting this kind of stuff very close to the skin. It's great in wet felting projects. Some people just put a whole layer in their projects. Um, it's a very processed fiber. It's similar to bamboo top, but it is man-made. So they got all the shiniest they could, really. <laughs> But I wanted to let you guys know that these, while they are named very similar to a lot of our other names, they may vary slightly from the colors of those names. So here I wanted to show you, this is our kiwi. We have merino top, the viscose, and tussa. So you can see the viscose is quite shinier. This is the same thing in slate. This is the merino top and the viscose. And then in our cocoa milk chocolate area, we have the viscose top down here compared to the merino top and the uh, what is it? Tussa silk, yes. So those are available in quite a few colors. I think we have about 24 to 26 colors for you guys. And they are a great, great inexpensive substitute to silk. Awesome. Okay. Enjoy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> Thank you. So we wanted to let you know uh, that the Viscose is now on the website, and I think Anne posted a link to that. We're going to include some Viscose in the Beachscape kits, the one that uh, Hannah just held up. We're going to show you how to achieve a few different shapes if you join us for the Beachscape Felt Along. That's October 12th, and that's under our events calendar. And I use a little bit of the Kiwi Viscose in this picture so it's very much a silk substitute it's just very inexpensive compared and it doesn't come in quite as many colors but it is still really fun to work with and mm -hmm. Rebecca asks how does the viscose compare to other silk when felted yeah it's going to be very similar it's going to compare to the bamboo and the tussa silk and that you get sheen and you get the squiggle um, it's just even softer than tussa silk yeah Mm -hmm. Very, very similar. Okay, and then Anne has something for us too, right? Yes. Okay, so yay, Anne! <laughs> 
All right, hi everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. We just wanted to make sure to invite our fabulous felting friends in the Austin area to our uh, Needle Felting Pumpkins and Owls event at the Austin Central Library uh, next Monday, September 24th. We'll be there from 6.30 to 8.30 needle felting pumpkins and owls and it's going to be so much fun so if you're a felter in the austin area definitely come on down and join us we'll be so glad to see you well thank you for being here everyone today we promised a felt along and today we are going to be needle felting fun little owls these are very non-realistic owls that I've been playing with and needle felting in quite a range of colors, which I think makes it super fun. Um, I'm the least realistic person when it comes to art. I like to do realism sometimes as a challenge, but I like the freedom of just doing fantasy type things. So we're going to be working with, I just want to show you the fibers. Um, we have put this together as a little kit we're working with our new fall arrangement in our MC1 goodie bag, which includes all of these fibers right here. And the owl kit is the fall goodie plus two ounces, it's two ounces right in, of the core wool. So we're working with our CW1 core wool today, and you can get our roving, our wool, core wool in a batting or a roving. And on top, we're gonna be putting our MC1, which is a batting. And for those of you who aren't familiar, if you watch even a couple of our videos, you'll start to get a taste of this fiber and how we'd like to work with it. And then of course, you'll get to see it today as well. So that's what I'm gonna be working with. And what we're gonna do is turn down the cameras now. I'm gonna show you some of the owls that I've been working on and we're just gonna jump right into it. So thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you, Anne, and thank you everybody for being here. If you're here for the first time, why don't you give us a hashtag new uh, so we can see your beautiful face and um, say hello to you. And while we're looking for some people to do that, I'm just going to give you, this is one more glimpse at the colors we're working with that come in our new fall pack. And um, that is also included in the owl pack. So I've been working on my owls, starting to use a few more of these colors. Where do I need to go forward? Forward. Okay, good. These are, the co these are some of the colors that we're... In just a little bit. It's not there. Working with today. And... Um, I think I'm going to make an orange guy, so I'm going to set these out of the way. And these are some of the owls that I've been playing with. Um, and gosh, you know, I feel like I haven't even started to really explore the varieties that you could do. I just wanted to first play with color shifting. Um, so this is like our new chimney, our dark chocolate, and this is blending the chimney and the dark chocolate together to create the tummy color. Uh, this is willow, and I think we include a different color in the, in the pack. And I'm going to show you the, my favorite way to make these little dome shapes quickly and firmly. And then we're going to just uh, decorate an owl and I'm going to show you how I make these design elements. And I'm sure that after that, you're just going to take off with your wild imagination and create them in many different ways. Uh, I'll finish this guy. I'll show you how to put the beak on him and how to smooth this out. I don't know if it shows up on the cameras, but I would call him unfinished, like he's still a little bit lumpy. And it may not show up super well, but that's what we're gonna try and do, is really smooth him out. Uh, I'll show you how I make these little horns, and we're just gonna decorate the whole thing. If we have time, I'll bring in some of these fun little uh, decoration fibers, and I'll show you how we work them in. This was our original Fantasy Owl and we used some of the Angelina in him and also some of the Neps. And if you have any questions on a particular owl, just let me know. But I'm gonna show you how we get started with the core wool. Uh, and this is, this is our goal right here. I like to make a dome on a skewer and I'm gonna explain why while I make one and then show you just a couple of alternatives. So this is what I like to do is basically make a, let's call it, is it more like a popsicle or an ice cream? What is it, like a popsicle? It's, like a, it's kind of like a popsicle. I like to make a little popsicle. I find there's a lot of value when you have a center core that you're going towards. 
Okay, this is our core wool. This is about the size strip that I like to work with or I split it in half. Um, and what I like to do initially when I want to make something really firm is work in thin, you know, thin strips so that I can build up the density. And this is how I do this. I'm going to start first by, this is my dominant hand, this is my twirling hand, and this is my guiding hand. I'm going to start first just to get it on the skewer and just start to wrap it, get it really tight so that it's wrapping. So notice that this hand is really holding tension and this hand is twisting. And then I'm actually going to push it off the skewer just a little bit. I want a little bit of air up here. If you lock this down really, really tight, you can needle felt minimally and still have a very dense shape. So again, for those of you who are brand, brand new, this is our CW1 core wool. We it's made to be used on the inside. What I do is kind of push this up so it doesn't get long. You don't want it long and stringy. You want to have like a nice blunt base. And first I'm just rolling kind of the middle. Now don't roll it too, too thick. This is one strip. I want my needle to be able to go through there. So you can start with a coarse needle. This is a 32 or something like a 36. Ours are color coded. The blue is our 32. And notice that when you poke, I'm going at an angle. And then just give it a turn and poke some more. You're just trying to get it to anchor down while you're holding all of the air out. You're just holding those fibers together the best you can. My thumb is better. Well, <laughs> y'all are saying, um, I took my brace off, so what you won't see me do is bend it. I can't bend it. But I took my brace off because my thumb feels strangled. I'm working on it though. I'm working on it. Yes. Rebecca asks, what if you want a more squishy owl? Do you wrap it less tightly? You can. You can rest it. Look, getting squishy is not difficult. <laughs> getting firm is the challenge. Squishy is not difficult. But I'm going to show you two other ways right after we do this one. An egg shape is usually more squishy. Okay, so what I've done now is got this center core. Like I can let go of it, and even though this is loose, it's not going to unravel. But just take a minute and get all of this laying down. If you want a nice, smooth surface, the firmer you make the base, the easier that's going to be. So notice now I'm going to go right into what would be the base, just a little bit, before I, I needle felt all this down. Use what you have here to kind of go up a little bit before you firm all this up. Because otherwise it's just going to squish all down. So let me put on another layer and then I'm going to show you how to roll for those who don't want to use a core. Okay, so now I'm going to add another layer on top, even though, see, this is still a little funky. Okay, so. Now I'm going to wrap right on top and what you can do is anchor it down before you roll. Just get it anchored down. How much core wool do you use? These probably weigh, I think they, they don't even weigh a quarter of an ounce. We don't, we'll weigh some once they're all finished. So I just, I don't know why, I seem to repeat the same size. I'm going to go to about right here. And then notice, see how this is just kind of arched and loose? We're going to shape that. You can have like a really flat, you know, kind of a flat dome, fat top, or one that's a little more. This guy's a little more pointy, you know. Uh, this guy's in between. Just depends on how you want to shape that top, how much you flatten it down. So just for our exercise today, I'm just going to tear that off. And notice that I never let go until I anchor those fibers down where I want them. And I'm always needle felting at an angle. I'm not banging into the skewer. And I'm not staying in one place. You want to work the whole thing and just get it all anchored down. 
firstly, Miles uh, shares that he really likes the idea of felting on the skewer. <laughs> and um, then Shelly asks, have you ever tried putting core wool into pantyhose and felting those to make balls? Yes, in fact, we have a free download and it may be in an old section of our website uh, for wet felting balls in the washing machine. Um, and we do have instructions for that. In fact, Speedy, my little doggy who's in here with us today, was my model because I put squeaker toys inside them and made dog toys. I know, dog, you can make put bells inside them for cats. So yes, that works well and is super fun. Okay, so the, notice that the top is still loose and fluffy, but the bottom is starting to get nice and firm. All you want to do, I'll move from my super coarse needle now and start shaping this a little bit. What happens when you work on a core is there's a tendency more to go towards the middle than to squish all the way through. And that makes for a nice firm shape. So before you put color on, continue working your shape so that it gets more smooth turn this one into this one so that you kind of work out the lumps and bumps and the fuzzies and you're going to have the most control if you have it on a skewer. Okay, so before we switch to off the skewer, let me show you if you don't want to work with a skewer. Uh, some of you have seen me do this before too. In place of a skewer, you can use a chenille stem or even a wire. Give it, a, you know, fold it in half like this and give it a twist. Notice that I make a V here, use my finger and thumb to separate it and twist. And then just use this just like we did the skewer. When you get to the bottom, you'll cut it off, turn it up if you can, and shove it up into the base. Otherwise, it wants to come out. So you can use this like the skewer. But one more thing I'll show you is just basically how to roll a ball or to do like an egg shape. So I wouldn't work with this much, it's too, it's too much to control, like this is a double thickness, so split it in half. And, um, Devin wants to know how many needles type, how many different needle types do you use on the core base before adding the color? I, I would probably be fine with just two, you know, even just going to the 36 after that one is enough, it's fine. You just want everything laying down and not lumpy. You don't want it to be like lumpy mashed potatoes. You want it to be like nice bread, you know? So that when you put your color on, you're not now trying to work out all the lumps and bumps. So this is how I would make one if I don't want to make it on the skewer. Some of you have seen this, me do this in our basic shapes video. Start with a tube, roll it tight, start to roll it into a ball like this, and then roll and alternate it. Push in the excess, push in the excess and roll. Now at some point, you're gonna to wanna to start shaping it a little bit and let it get bigger. So let it get a little bit bigger, but you don't want like this, see this big poof? You wanna always guide that in. So after you start to get your shape, notice it's kind of getting oval. You can keep working that oval a little bit. And I like to sort of taper one end when I get this big fat cylinder. Now I'm going to put pressure on this end so that it's a little more tapered, like to be the top. And the bottom I want to be more bulky um, so that I can have a nice firm base. So here's what I'll do. Even though this is long and tall, just needle felt that down. You're going to notice that right away this feels much more gassy than working on the skewer like we just did because you roll so much up before you even needle but still needle to the middle to the middle to the middle and then work around your whole shape to get it in the shape that you want and notice that you can keep adding wool on just remember you know when you're making these shapes the importance of kind of getting the lumps out of the core layer you wouldn't make your bed with your sheets all rumpled up underneath the top layer. If you're, if you're gonna make your bed. Now you don't have to make your bed. Some people don't make their bed. But if you make your bed, you're not gonna have a layer of sheets and a layer of blankets rumpled up and try and straighten the top layer, right? You want the underneath sheets to be straight before you put your comforter on top or whatever. So the same thing with your core wool. Work out your lumps and bumps the best you can in your under layers before you put your top layers on. And 
Robin asks, how many inches tall is the base? Oh, uh, let's grab a ruler. Because mine are short. I just make them a little shortest. But for those of you who are brand, brand new, for those of you who are more seasoned, um, sorry for the, the pain and watching me do this. <laughs> I know it's probably painful. Uh, um, I know it's probably painful to watch me do something so basic, but for those of you who are brand, brand new, we just want to show you how to do it. And I'll show you that this one is definitely more squishy, you know, and is going to take more work than like this one. It's a little more squishy and especially up here. So you're going to want to work out all your shapes before you add the top layer on. So my little owls on average, was it Robin asked? Robin. Hi Robin. My buddy Robin Barrett. Uh, Robin Bellick. Oh, Robin Bellick. Where's Robin from? This one is about two and a half inches. This guy, now I don't measure them by, oh, by the way, two, maybe and a half inches. Owl, owl measures. Uh, I guess I'm pretty consistent because they're all between like two and a half and three inches tall. Mine are small. And we'll weigh them for you so you can see, but mine are tiny. What size is the felting mat? This one is our 18. 18 by this one is our 18 by 24, which is a really nice size mat. Okay, my vanilla popsicle stick is ready. All right, Ruth. Uh, <laughs> nice, it's a sunny day in Maryland. Connie says she <laughs> always learned something. Bless you, Connie. <laughs> Bless you. Okay, so let's start with the popsicle stick I brought today. And I'll go ahead and use um, something. Oh, I'm going to use this color, which I've already started an owl. Should I use this color? Maybe. Pretty simple. Does it show up okay? Or is it too bright? I can go uh, to looks chimney. It like the hot orange on camera. It looks it like looks the pretty. hot orange. Um, this is our red grapefruit. Um, it looks pretty good on mine. Uh, okay, so we're going to use red grapefruit. Now, if you get this pack from us, this is a half thickness of our MC1 bat. So, if you have our MC1 batting on the roll that it comes in, you would split it, split the thickness like this to get it thinner. A half thickness is all you need. And this is what I do. You know, it's, you, most of you figure this out all by yourself. I just kind of piece it so I know about how much I need. Then I'm gonna just pull that off. Just tear so easy, very, very short staple length and allows you to get uh, lots of detail easy to blend and then I'm gonna leave a little over the top and a little over the bottom so this is where I fit and I you know measure like a finger or two depending on how big your base is this is all we're gonna do if I have a blunt end you can just taper it out a little bit and you can also tuck it under so I'm gonna roll my little guy tightly and I am using my new favorite tool, which is the modified Jennifer tool, Jennifer Fields. It's four to five 42 triangle needles rubber banded together. Cheapest tool you can get. We do sell tools. I love tools. This is my cheapest tool ever. You don't even have to. I should start giving away rubber bands if you buy two packs. <laughs> This is what I do. Start on one end, treat it like shelf paper so that you work out all the excess as you go around. Work just up the center of the cylinder. Don't even worry about the tops and bottoms yet. I do this while I'm watching something really benign on Netflix. <laughs> something background noise. <laughs> it's so sad. I've discovered television after um, how many years since 1991, Anne? 27? 27 years. <laughs> maybe I've been watching Netflix for a couple of years, maybe a year. So I've discovered television again. This is all I do to get it covered. So let me get this whole little piece covered to show you. And Maria asks, could you use Merino top to cover the wool? Okay, so I'm going to answer two questions. Uh, who asked that, Marina? Uh, Maria. Maria asked, can you use Marina, Merino top? And then someone else, is this called roving? 
This is called batting, and what we're gonna do is grab a roll to show you, and we have a video that we're gonna link to also where we talk about the different types of fiber. This particular fiber is our brand, Living Felt brand. It's called MC1, uh, so it's a Merino Cross breed, and it's processed into what's called a batting. And a batting, although this is a little tiny example, a dinky example of our batting, looks like this, in that the fibers are all going in different directions and it's like in this sort of lofty compilation. This is how we sell it in a little two ounce, two ounce or more roll. Um, and this is just a little like quarter ounce sample of that. And you could use Merino Top, but Merino Top is more difficult to needle felt because all the fibers are going in the same direction. Like this is a top, even though it's Tessa Silk, all the fibers are going in the same direction and the needles wanna slip right through the fibers. So in order to needle felt Merino, it's actually easier to mix it up, Merino Top, not just Merino, but Merino Top, it's easier to mix the fibers up and get them going in different directions. Okay, so this is what I do on my owls. This is like step one, is just get that center laying down nice and smooth with no folds and no gaps. Then I go to the top here, it's gonna be the top of the head, and, oh, you can take it off the skewer, by the way. <laughs> uh, I'll do that. I go to the top, and I sort of put my fingers together like this and just pull off the excess. And I'm gonna even do the same for the bottom. So for the bottom, on, when you take it off the skewer, push it instead of pull it. If you pull it, sometimes that center core tends to stay back, you know, and stick to the, the wood. So push it off if you can instead. We're gonna do the same for the bottom. And that is, we just don't want too much bulk down here. So sort of put your fingers together and then just pull off the excess. Cause you can always add more back. And this is how I do it. I'm just going to take these loose fibers and with the fancy modified Jennifer tool, we gotta give it a name. It's gotta be like the rubber band man or the rubber band toe, I don't know what. I sort of work up from what was the base and hopefully I'm showing up on a, I'm showing up okay. If you get too much, take it off because you don't want a bunch of bulk up there. You just want enough to fill in the gap and you can always patch in it's what's kind of the magic of the batting, is you can always patch in more, and you can patch in seamlessly. It won't even show. And Sharon asks, would 38 size needles work as well? 38 needles are great, great workhorses for moving wool. I often don't use them in the surface layer, or if I do, I'm still gonna end up with a finer needle. Um, so 38s would work, and I didn't bring any to my workstation today. But what I do have is a pen tool. That This pen tool is loaded with 38 spirals. Um, so 38 spirals would work also. And it's just that a 38 is more of a shaping tool. So when I get to a surface layer, I'm often working with a finer needle. And that's just my preference, especially when my surface layer is so thin. If I was making a bulky or very shapely surface layer, I might work with a needle that's more like a 38. But because I like my sculptures to be um, very smooth and not show needle marks, by the time I get to the surface layer, I like to be working with a fine needle like a 42. Iona says, hello from Sweden, hello. <laughs> So wonderful to have you here. Okay, so the same for the bottom. We don't want too much bulk. Pull that off. You can always use these little bits. You can always use them in something else. And just guide that wool along the bottom. Just sort of tuck it to the center and then flatten it out just like that. Karen asks, so will you use the finer point spiral later on in finishing? Mm -mm. No, I like the 42. The finer, the 40 spiral, I use, um, a little more selectively. Some people work with it a lot, and I think it's like I've said before, it's kind of like a paintbrush. It depends on what you like. I like a 40 spiral, um, like when I'm doing a landscape picture or something, and I'm really working on pulling the wool down and like 
what feels like two different levels because a spiral you have to push in a little more far in order to use the different bits of the spiral but these 42 gauge needles have barbs that are right along the ends here 40 it has like two sets of barbs that are right close to the tip and that's why I like this needle for surface finishing it's my favorite personally. Okay, so what I would do on these little owls is, is this is this is quite lumpy and bumpy. Is I'm going to continue to use this tool or a single 42 and just work over all the bumps. And what you'll notice is that I'm often not working like from my line of sight is straight to here. I'm often not needle felting here. I'm needle felting here, which is a horizon. So on the live camera, that would be here. From your live view, I would be needle felting here where I can see, use the foam as a background and see what's still lumpy and bumpy as I turn my piece. Does that show on the live camera? And then, um, yeah, so I use this horizon to see what do I need to needle felt and that's why I'm often needle felting away from me and away from my line of sight. And Laura asks, do you have any tips on getting uh, these products to to stand, she says she has difficulty. Oh, this is. She works. Oh no, this is going to stand. See how we did it on the skewer by going into the base while it was on the skewer by needle felting up into that that bottom. This is making a very firm core, and all of these all of these little guys these stand without problem. So the bottom is already flat. This is, uh, and then you just flatten it more with this tool or you could use your other tool and you can also use a punch tool um, and go, the, the punch tool is actually kind of fine, um, but anything to just get that bottom flush, that's all you need is to get the bottom flush and they'll stand just fine. Now I wanted to show this tool for those of you who have it, the 8900 is great for working over especially like a sphere or a surface and rather than use this little tool, if you have this one, it's loaded with 40 triangles which is a nice fine needle and it will go around and just shape your entire piece rather quickly. So get this piece shaped up and I'm going to jump ahead so that we can finish our owls and I'll show you how I make all the little tiny bits. Um, and I'm going to leave this guy just a little bit rough so I can show you how we do that. The next thing I usually do is decide the eye and the tummy. So let's say we're going to kind of do, uh, let's do this guy that I'm working on right here so I can kind of catch up. It's so easy and most of you uh, can see already. Um, but so I'm going to use this pomegranate. It's kind of a raspberry color here on the tummy. And you just kind of decide, like I have lots of different little eye models here. Uh, this is for the live camera. You could go so many directions. I feel like I've barely scratched the surface with, you know, how you might how you might make the eyes. Just decide kind of how you want your eyes to be and how big you want them to be. I'll make them just kind of like this little guy, I guess. So you can put your eyes first or your tummy first. In our pack we're giving you uh, a very dark gray this is called coal so it's almost black um, which is really great and when you do the eyes you can either do the center first or the outer ring first I do both we doing okay Ann I need a single needle uh, could you get me a 42 sorry I didn't grab a 42 so these have coal and then green and then yellow. Maybe what I'll do, thank you. I'm gonna do the yellow ring just in the essence of time because I wanna show you how I do the beak, uh, the beak and the horns. When I do the ring of the eyes, I just take a thin strip and then you just roll it like you can roll it in your fingers, you can roll it on your jeans, you can even roll it on your foam and just make a little noodle. A noodle, kind of like a noodle. <laughs> make a little noodle and that'll give it some density. You know, you're actually dry felting it a little bit when you do this. You don't have to poke it to give it that shape. Felting is just entangling the fibers and getting them to lock together. So you can dry felt it a little bit to make yourself a nice noodle. And then shape out your eye rings. I'm gonna make the rounder part of him. 
I usually use my finger or something to make that big circle and pinch it off and thank you very much. If you make them both at the same time, you know that you have about the same length. You can always add on to these if you want to. So just start somewhere. If I'm doing this at home, I don't rush. I'm not a production filter even on these little projects. Like if I'm making one of these, it's because it's therapeutic. <laughs> I'm having a great time. Someone asked me yesterday, what do I do after work to relax? And it's actually little projects like this, something that I can pick up and put down, no pressure. So notice how we just made that little noodle and then we just guide it into a circle. It's no more complicated than that, that you just shape it as you go. You can give it dimension or you can make it flat. If you want it to have dimension, as soon as you have it tacked down, then start going into the sides and firming up the perimeter before you tack it down. And that will allow you to sort of beef it up so that it can have more dimension and then you can just barely tack it down. So take your time on those and shape them as you work. Any questions I can ask? Answer? <laughs> can I ask a question? Okay, so then I just match this one up with the next one. Just start right there in the middle Anchor it down and then make your circle again. Are some of y'all needle felting along with me? Are you making a little owl while I'm, fel while I'm felting? I love Kimberly Pulley posted an owl. It was like a little barn owl. I was telling the girls that the owls came back to my yard just this week hunting behind my house. You don't have to worry about the center too much because you can drop a new color, you know, down on top of that. Just try and make the two eyes the same. And you know, the one thing I think would be fun to play with is, you know, you can have worried owl by squishing in the, you know, <laughs> squish in the little sides instead of making them perfectly round. <laughs> you could give them eyelids, which I haven't done yet. You could have fun with it. Um, Maria says the eyes look like glasses. <laughs> they do. Okay, so that's, um, that's just how I make the inner eye, the little noodle shapes. And then you can just drop, like if you want, you can drop the coal or whatever. I'll show you the eyes again in a second. Just some ideas anyway. All these are ideas because you guys are brilliant. You're going to come up with some adorable, amazing. Some of you will prefer to do something a little more realistic. Darlene shares that she has a mated pair of great horned owls in her backyard. Wow. These, I think that these ones, last year I had barred owls, and this year I think that I have barn owls. I don't think they're the same. They look different color than the ones that were there last year. Okay, so I'm, these ones I'm just filling in with the coal, and notice how easy that is. You can just tuck it all in loose. You don't have to shape it, and then you can actually twirl this around to make it kind of round. Just twirl it to gather up all those loose fibers. Now this little guy is very rough, I'll tell you. Uh, I would really spend some time on him, and but I want to show you how I do the little horns and stuff. To put a little dot in the eye, um, just grab another little fluff, plunk it down, and poke it once or twice, and then twirl it. Poke it once or twice, and then twirl it. That's all you got to do. It's so, so, so easy. You know what I'm gonna do is end up going home and working on this little guy. <laughs> twirl, twirl, twirl. That's the technique, twirl, twirl, twirl. Okay, so let me show you how I make the beak and the horns and we'll cover the tummy too. We'll do the tummy right now. Um, I'm just gonna put this right down there on him. And this is all I do is just sort of pull it off match it up, pull it off, and then I like to tuck it right up underneath the eyes. So I'm an, I know it probably doesn't show up too different from you all, 
Any tips on getting the eyes even? So Kim, the thing would be to get the eyes even, one of the things I've done is just build one, 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 one. So like on this little guy, I put the yellow first and then the brown around and then the brown around uh, and the black in the center. Or So I would just say build them at the same time or like this little noodle. If you do the noodle project, then you can get the noodles even at first. Um, that's just kind of what I've been doing. Same on this guy. Um, put the black and then the perimeter. So just do just do the eyes in stages side by side. When I put the tummy on, I tuck it right, usually in between the eyes. And you know, as you change your design, you'll see. But notice all you have to do is tuck your needle right up underneath there and get it to guide around. I find it fun if the belly color is very similar to then trim it with another color. And this is what it, this is what I would use my multi needle tool here, my little modified Jennifer tool. This is a really good shaper. It pushes more wool than you might think because it's fine. There's not a lot of resistance, so it really it'll move wool without resisting a whole bunch. If you put three, five, four, five, thirty sixes together like this, they're going to want to fight you. So, this is a quick way to get the wool down. You can use your clacker if you want. You know, I call this the clacker, the 8900. <laughs> I call it the clacker to get it all down. But me, I'm more likely to just sit and have fun and nerd out with this little tool right here. So you just, you can guide the fibers if they're loose, if they're not laying down yet. You can guide them. <laughs> Shelly says it looks like Beaker from the Muppets. Oh, I love Beaker. You should give him a big honking nose. So this is my super rough owl. He needs work, but I just want to show you the techniques and I'm going to show you how to smooth them also. See that the clacker tool left a bunch of holes because it drives, you drive it so far in. That's why I don't like it for a surface finishing. Okay, but let me show you how I make the beak, which is kind of fun and easy. And then I'll show you how to make the horns, which is almost the same technique. To make the beak, this is what I do. Take a small little piece and this is just an idea, but I want the beaks, I want all the beaks to be on there and not loose. And I wanted them to be easy to make. So even if they're a little, whether they're big or small, all of these beaks are made the same way, even this black one. So this is what I do. Using the same needle that I'm already working on, this one, I take the wool and twist it around just like we did the skewer and just get it, once you get it to grab on, just keep twisting. Make it, make it longer than you need it. And give yourself, depending on how big you want to make it. I'll make this one just a little bit bigger so you can see it. So you can kind of hopefully see how thick that is. And tear it off. And then just wrap it all the way around your skewer. Use your finger to kind of dry felt it together. And then here's what we're going to do. Push it off your skewer and I take one fluffy end and lay it right here in between the eyes. So see how it's laying down into the belly? I'm going to anchor it down in there and then just flip it up and tuck under as much as you need back underneath. So this, this end I'm actually going to tuck underneath itself and then needle felt it down in between the eyes. So you can get your needle right underneath there and needle felt it underneath the eyes. And then you go down in the sides. So I hope that if that doesn't show, I can do it again. See if there's any questions. So it's just a noodle with the two ends needle felted underneath. So a couple of our felting friends want to know would using a, a net a wool net work for the beak? I did that on this guy. This guy has a little wool net for his beak right there. It's hard to see because it's like a saffron color. Um, but that has a wool net for a beak. So certainly you can. You can use anything you want. Um, yep, so that's how I make that's how I make the beak. Now the the little horns are made the same way except I use the skewer. Um, and gonna have to jam and do the sleeves. So let's do the, the sleeves, the arms, wings. 
<laughs> the wings. Okay, so for these little horns, have fun making these in different shapes. There's two ways I make them. One is a triangle and one is a roll. So the roll you already have figured out. Play with the sizes. The roll I would make on the skewer. Let me push this off the skewer. The roll I would make on the skewer, like these, uh, let's see, these here are a little roll, the more pointy, pointy long ones. These are a roll, a cone really, I call it a cone, and I make it on a smaller skewer. This is a great big shish kebab skewer. I keep one end tapered with next to my finger and this end is going to be loose and flayed, sort of triangled out. So make this like a triangle, make it a cone, felt it with your fingers, push it off the skewer because it's really thin and then I needle felt in the end right away. And even though it's narrow, I'm not needle felting all the way through. Needle felt, I'm using my fine needle to the middle, to the middle, to the middle. And that way it doesn't get fuzzy on the opposite side. Keep doing that so that it firms up. And once you kind of get that shaped, you know, do two at the same time. You want it to be firm, you know, so that if somebody touches it, they don't tear it apart. If it's under felted, it'll just tear apart when someone touches it. In the base, what you'll do is open this part up and you're gonna needle felt right down in there also and firm it up down the middle. Watch your fingers so you don't pokey yourself or use your finger guards. So go right in the middle and we're gonna put that then, I would just continue needle felting it and shaping it and I would make them both at the same time because I want it to be real nice and firm. So that's how you make a cone, a cone one on the skewer, or you can make a triangle, which I like to do also. Uh, the flatter ones, when I want it to be a little bit flatter rather than pokey up like this, then I just do a triangle really. So pick your shape, play with it. I just put the skewer here fold this over and then I'm going to fold it actually back over itself so that it's like a double fold. If you can see that, it's kind of like a double fold because I want it to be thick. So then I'm going to needle felt that first in place. Just get it down and then I'm going to start to actually kind of shape it in so that it gets more narrow. I'll needle felt on both sides. And down the top, you've got to go, you've got to firm it up really on all sides. Otherwise, it's going to be thin and uh, easily tear apart. So remember to go to the middle. Remember to build up the bulk and that you can push, you need to push bulk from all sides. Uh, the same in here, you can firm it up, you can firm this up this way too. So. What I'll do is I'll make these shapes however I want them, get them so that they really hold together, and this is an example. I just sort of uh, pinned this one to this owl, so I want to show you how we blend it on. For those who did the doll class with me, you got to see like how I like to blend layers so they don't show. And for those of you who haven't worked with batting before and you've only worked with roving, which tends to be a longer staple length, I think you'll appreciate how easy it is to uh, join two pieces when you have batting and have it not show. So what I'll do is just fluff this part out and make it nice and flat and then lay it right where I want it. And when you join two pieces, you're gonna go this direction. Blend long ways and don't go against. So you won't go this way, you'll blend your fibers this way. And go up the whole length, meaning from here, from here to here, so that you're joining those underneath layers also. If you want it to sort of stand and have, you know, dimension turn it around and then just blend that down. Everyone wants to see how to attach the neck and the glass eyes. Okay. Okay, so we'll squeaky that in and um, let's do nips real fast and glass eyes. Okay. So uh, glass eyes first. We'll just do a quick demonstration. Do we even have any E6000 in the drawer, do we? Do we have E6000? 
Okay, so let's do glass eyes first because I'm just going to show you since they're fast. These are glass eyes and these are a size, is this a size 9, eh, Ann? Niner. It's either the 9 or the 7. This is the 9 or the 7. I'd have to look and see. When you buy glass eyes, at least from us, they're going to come on a single rod and they're joined. Um, so you'll cut them the length you want them. You're going to need uh, a pair of wire cutters. So these are needle, no pli needle nose pliers and wire cutters. If you happen to need some and you're shopping with us, we have them in the store. The only thing I say is cut them at a real nice angle so that that wire that you cut is really sharp. It's got like a sharp point to it as much as possible. So you're going to cut them off the wire. I tend not to glue mine in because I'm always teaching um, and so some people will glue them in with super glue or E6000 glue. So you're going to cut them as short as you need them and then on your figure, whatever you have for the live camera, for the radio camera, what you're going to do is use one of your really coarse needles and it helps if you drive a hole. Now I'll tell you that if your figure is super squishy, this is not rock hard, but if it's super squishy, when you go to push the eyes in, they're gonna, the wool is just gonna wanna cave. So you need to be able to make a nice hole. And all you have to do then is push them in. That's it. You make, cut the, <laughs> cut the eyes, make a hole, push them in, and my encouragement is to kind of bury them in a little bit. You know, they shouldn't sit up on the face. They should be down, as you can see here. And then once you have the placement and you know you love it, you can either put glue in the hole or glue on the end or glue on the back. Just be careful because it'll get all over the surface and glue them in place if you want them to be forever in there, okay? So that's like easy, easy, easy peasy. Let's look at the neps and I'll show you how I like to do the neps and maybe even the Angelina. So this is plum. This is plum Angelina. Woo wee. These are some crazy neps. You can't go too crazy with neps. Neps, for those someone who's going to ask, are felted bits of wool. They're felted. So, you know, they're already kind of done. What helps to do if you want to get them in your figure is use whatever color they're going to go in with and just get a little fiber in between those neps. Trust me on this one. I'm even doing it with the Angelina. Just get a little fiber in between them and you're still going to get the benefit of the bling. Okay, so I've got a little bit mixed in there, but it's still going to look grand when I put it on my little figure. So that might be a little white. Maybe his whole tummy should be neps. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want is Nep's belly. Okay, then you guys will believe me that this works. Now, you're going to lose some, oh, by the way, but what you kind of do is trap down the Nep's with wool on top so the wool kind of stretches over the top. And I would use my little thin gauge needle and needle felt, try and needle felt the wool that is going in between. It's difficult to get the neps to needle felt onto the wool. My friend Joyce showed us how to go backwards and I'll show you that real quick too. Joyce Hazelrig was just here and did the dragon workshop with us which was amazing and fun and I hope next time that I'll have time to make a dragon. So I would take a thin little wisp of wool like this over any other neps that I want to anchor down, just sort of lay it over the top, and then needle felt that wool instead of trying to needle felt the neps. Now some neps are going to come off. The same with this Angelina. I'm about to trim some of this Angelina off. Neps are felted so they don't want to lay down, but you can try and get them to lay down. And I do that, like on this guy, by really trapping wool over the top. And that's how that is, that's how I did that. I'm gonna scroll so I can see if y'all have any questions. Now these are really sitting on top, so what I would do is continue to blend some wool on top so that you get like the, the element of neps, but you're not gonna get them. Um, it's difficult to get them to really lay down all by themselves. I'm about to get the hook here from the fairies, but let me grab just a little pair of scissors and take our hornless owl. Oh, Anne's Anne to the rescue. And I'm going to trim away this Angelina. And 
uh, even maybe some parts of the belly that I don't want there. Some of them are a little far. I think he would look cute with neps above his eyebrows. Do you find these scissors? Oh, these are fine. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just trim away this Angelina that's like hairy and crazy. Angelina, for those of you who don't know, is um, it's a polyester fiber and it doesn't felt, so you have to anchor it down. These are big scissors for the job, but um, all I want to do is trim away the great big hairy bits. He looks like a goofy chick and not an owl <laughs> because he doesn't have his little horns. But um, the nubs don't really want to felt all by themselves. So the other way to do this, uh, that's how I did these around the perimeter, is just with little bits of wool around the perimeter. But the other way to do nubs that my friend Joyce taught us is to put them on your fiber, let's say like this, and then you needle felt from the back with your punch tool. They won't all stick, I promise. You still have to, um, you know, coax them a little bit, but they tend to needle felt up from the back. So that's another way to do it, and then you would have to apply that to whatever you're felting. So anchor them from the top or felt them from the back. Okay, so just a quick look at wings. You can really have fun with this or be realistic and semi-realistic, you know, add some little details and what would look like little feathers with little tiny just strips of wool needle felted down. It takes a lot of time, but it's really easy to do. You just tack it down. Or you could put on wings that are decorative like this. I made mine firm and they're sticking up off the owl, they're dimensional. Or you could even make them flat. So there's any number of ways to do that. And this is just, of course, on these playful little owls. So let's look at how we needle felt the wings in place. And what we're gonna do is take off a little bit of wool, um, take off a little bit of wool in the color that you want. You can trim it if you want to. And we're just going to fold it over and then needle felt it in place. Pull off two lengths of wool that are the same so that the wings match, fold it in half over your finger, and then just check your size and your placement on your owl. I like the wool not to extend too low onto the body, but you can always pinch it off. So I start needle felting at the top, and if you want to make a heart like this one, create your indent very early on so that you can sculpt the wool. I do like to use my fine needles for this because it is the surface outer layer, and I find that a real gradual compaction can make a firm compaction, but also without leaving a lot of needle marks. So. If you enjoy that process, then take your time and go ahead and work with a fine needle. And notice that I kind of go around the outside and scoop the wool in so that it'll make it kind of fat and beefy. If you don't want it to have dimension or to be um, puffy, then you can just needle felt it straight down and you might make yours even smaller than mine. I start needle felting at the top and work my way down to the sides and I still might pull some wool off the bottom. This just helps me see how much wool gets pushed so I know how much to pull off. And if you use your opposite hand to hold the wool in place, then you won't pull off too much. If you're using roving or top, something that's traditionally processed for a longer staple length of fiber, that's really helpful as well so that you don't pull off more than you want. So just keep shaping it with your needle felting, um, bring it down to a point and um, compact it as you go. You know, keep sculpting and compacting as you go. Notice that I kind of work the whole shape over and over and over. And even though it looks like it has needle marks now, as you continue to compress the wool, those will go away. I like to take my time on this part or any of the part that you know is the outer layer of a sculpture because it is fun to make them as smooth as you want. You can use a multi-needle tool if you like. Just note that any time you're using more needles, there's a tendency to push more deeply. And so even though there's fine needles grouped together, it's liable to make it look like there's more holes. I really like to finish the last, you know, at least 20% of a piece with my finest needle and um, just 
you know, work the whole piece and sculpt it down so that you get it all out. In a minute here, I'm going to show you um, a piece that's not quite finished so you can look at and see how we smooth. It's one of the most common questions I get is how to smooth. And this is just how I do it. Exactly what you're seeing now is just poke, 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 poke with a very fine needle. So look at this little guy. I'm going to try and show him to you up close. And I would call him not finished. Here he is focused. Look how rough he looks, especially his tummy still looks rough. Even his eyes and his entire outer little coat. This is something that I would just sit and work with the needle. I'm showing you that I could pull fibers up a little if I want. And when I finish, I just do shallow, shallow pokes. I'll vary the angle. I'll rotate the piece and I poke everywhere. There's not a needle mark. Now, usually we're viewing a piece at like an arm's length, but when I finish, I am like inches away from my piece. So when I'm smoothing a surface, I get real up close and personal. And if you want your work to be more and more detailed, whether it's playful like this or realistic, sometimes I find that just the better I can see, the more light I have and the closer I get to it, I can see what's happening. And I'm just gonna go around and poke the surface like this, poke, poke, poke. Very intentional little tiny pokes all around the surface. So think about compressing the wool down to the level of the needle marks that you see. Once the surface is no longer furry or hairy, with this batting, it might have just a tiny bit of fuzz, but it won't be hairy. If it seems hairy, then needle felt it some more. Other fibers tend to be a little more hairy or a little more furry. Still, if you get it nice and firm, if you have a hairy wool, you can trim it. With this, it'll pretty much all lay down and you'll be able to rub it without messing it up. And that's when you know that you have it nice and flush or smooth. So you can rub it and it doesn't even show. See how minimally fuzzy that is? And I haven't even finished it. So just keep needle felting and poking and enjoy the process. It's really rather meditative and fun. You guys, thank you so much for joining us today. I can't wait to see your little owls. I hope you will share them in our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups living felt friends, or you can also post them on our Facebook page, uh, which is just facebook.com slash living felt. And you might even get your owl featured in our newsletter or on our blog. I hope you've had fun. If you like more videos like this, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and you can find out whenever we're going live and whenever we're doing live felt alongs like these. Have a great day.